Amen. That is good. Just over in that glory land. I, I can't wait. Y'all might not get excited about it, but y'all forgive me. I'm going to get excited about it. I, I'm going to walk with Jesus one day. I, I'm not going to have to pray to Him no more. I'm going to be able to just walk over and thank Him for what He did. I, I'm going to bow down to Him. Hey, one day I'm going to be able to see Him eye to eye and thank Him personally for dying for me. Amen. Amen. Well, y'all look a little bit more comfortable since y'all breathe. I, I, my daughter, I'll tell y'all this why I switch over this technology here. We went to unplug this stuff. But we went door knocking the other day, and Casey told me, she said, Daddy, I, I want to go off of bad. She said, I want you to take me. I said, Amen. I said, You can go with me. We we'll calm down until I turn it down. And uh, we knocked on the door, and I mean, when she knocked on the door, she rattled the window. I, I mean, I thought. Praise God. We, I mean, she, she was ready. She was. She looked ready. She told me she was ready. Then as soon as the, the lady answered the door, y'all still hear me pretty good? Amen. I'll put on my street lights if I get too loud. But the lady opened the door, and when she did, I, I looked at Casey. Casey, and she said, Ma'am, I'm going to invite you to Sister Baptist Church. I'm just going to give you this Bible track. And I, mean, and I, and I watched her face. And, and she said she was ready. I even when the rubber hit the road, I don't know if she was as quite as ready as she was. I looked out here. I seen a lot of faces that looked about like her at that door that day. They said, we're ready for revival, but there's still a hesitancy. Hey, I, I want to make you feel comfortable real quick. God's still in control. Hey, man, Jesus is on the throne. Hey, everything's all right, and he's looking for a righteous remnant that wants to gather together and praise him. Hey, he wants to see a righteous remnant wants to come together and worship him. And he wants his word to go forth. Hey, you want revival? It all starts with Jesus. I was about this young lady said in that song she was singing. She said, if you miss heaven, you're going to miss it all. Hey, if you need something to smile about, I know it's been rough. Hey, the last couple of weeks have been rough. Us Christians feel like we've lost some battleground with this sodomite marriage and all this other thing. But look at me. You're still on the winning side tonight. Amen. We're sitting under a tent down in Crab Orchard, Kentucky. You never know. A little spark might catch a big flame. Revival can start right here. Hey, take a bunch of young men and get banjo. You won't find no sod my play banjo, by the way. Amen. I like a banjo being around. I know we're in good company. Somebody say amen. Don't amen. get me going to the jet. Hey, I like seeing a banjo plugged. I like young ladies getting up and want to sing for God. Hey, I, I thank God for Brother Jeff and that guitar. Hey, if you want to get excited, you think about heaven. Think about Jesus waiting there. And one day, listen, you want to hear the words well done? You got to do well to hear it. Amen. But y'all's faces look a lot better, hasn't it? And I got one running to me. <laughs> well, amen. We, we, we relaxed a little bit. I got to get that little introduction in there. If you got Bibles with you, turn to Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 6. I'm not bringing nothing new. Amen. amen. I'm not bringing nothing new tonight. I'm, I'm not bringing no new phrase, no new catch. I ain't bringing no new Bible. Y'all gonna have to help me. We'll be here till 10. I promise you. Hey, I ain't bringing no new Bible tonight. I'm preaching out of a King James authorized Bible. I don't believe in it just being the version. I believe it's the Bible. Amen? Amen. Amen. Y'all gonna help me out. I said we come under here. I'm not bringing nothing new tonight. There'll be nothing new that's gonna shock you. There's gonna be nothing new that you probably haven't heard before. But like Peter told me, he said, as long as I'm in this tabernacle, I'm here to stir you to remembrance. Amen. I can tell you right now, Christians need a stirring. We need it more now than ever because if you come into a tent, listen, I, I remember when they used to even talk about a tent revival, you could set most people down. I mean, they so wound up just the fact to get together with brothers and sisters. I still like it, brother. No, I like it, brother and sister talk. You like it? Hey, man, I like it. When they used to get stirred up and on, they get together with brothers and sisters. Hey, they weren't coming for nothing more. They didn't care who was preaching. They didn't care who was singing. They come to praise God. They wanted to see Jesus high and lifted up. Somebody say amen. Amen. Hey, they got together for one purpose, and that was to praise the Lord. If we want to see this country see revival, we don't need nothing new. We need to look at them old past. That's what we're going to be reading back here. Look at Jeremiah. Chapter 6 here. I, most people just jump right over verse 16. I, I want you to look at verse 10. I'm going to read through 16. And if you will and you're able, would you stand for the honor of the reading of the Word of God? 
man asked him one time, he said, why do you believe? And I said, if it was good enough for Ezra to tell him to do it, hey, we're going to do it too. Amen? Amen. But Jeremiah chapter 6 and verse 10 starts like this. To whom shall I speak and give warning that they may hear? Behold, their ear is uncircumcised and they cannot hearken. Behold, the word of the Lord is unto them a reproach. They have no delight in it. Therefore, I am full of the fury of the Lord. I am weary with holding in. I will pour it out upon the children abroad and upon the assembly of the young men together. For even the husband with the wife shall be taken, the age with him that is full of days. And their houses shall be turned into others. With their fields and wives together, for I will stretch out my hand upon the inhabitants of the land, saith the Lord. For from the least of them, even to the greatest of them, every one is given to covetousness. And from the prophet, even unto the priest, every one dealeth falsely. They have healed also the hurt of the daughter of my people slightly, saying, Peace, peace, when there is no peace. Were they ashamed when they committed abomination? Nay, they were not at all shamed, neither could they blush. Therefore they shall fall among them that fall, and at the time that I visit them they shall be cast down, saith the Lord. This is our verse text right here for the night to start this tent revival. This is the foundation that you need to lay out if you want to see revival not only in a tent, but in your personal life. Thus saith the Lord, Stand ye in the ways, and see. Ask for the old paths. Where is the good way, and walk therein? Ye shall find rest for your souls. But they said, We will not hearken. Let us pray. Dear Lord Jesus, God, Lord, I thank you for showing up already, Lord. God, we need you. Lord, I need you. God, I know that these burdens in this these seats, these burdens behind this pulpit. Lord, we need you. We can't handle them on our own. Lord, I ask you to give me a special note tonight, Lord. I know I ask you this every week, but Lord, I need you tonight again. Not out of vain repetition, but I need your power. Lord, I ask you to put the cross out before me and anoint me. God, not one word come from my mouth that be vain, but through your power. God, we're going to praise you for all that you're going to do. Lord, if there's one in here that is not saved, if there's one in here who has not been born again, let them hearken unto the warning. It may be too late after today. But if they feel that tug at their heart, Lord, this old-fashioned altar will be open. Lord, let them accept you today. Let today be their hour. Today be their day. God, we're going to praise you for all that you do in the name of Jesus. Amen. Y'all may be seated. As I've been in prayer much often not just for here, but preaching in the jails. I want to see revival in our country. But I'm going to tell you right now, the first thing before I get into the message, we as saved people, if you're lost and you have not been born again, look at me, your future is more terrible than any fall of any country. But I'm going to say right now, for the saved in this room, for the saved under this tent, we must stop and our words and start putting them into action. We want revival. We claim we want revival. We want to see something done. But when it comes time to doing so, we stop only at our words. I, I, I see more and more here in the, the last few months of men proclaiming they want revival, but when it comes time to revival, they stop short. Because they find out that there's got to be more than just a little bit of say-so. A little bit more than, well, I, I, I hope it comes. I still serve a living God. Amen? Amen? I still serve a Lord that said if His people shall turn, listen to me, from their wicked ways, all they have to do is go around about, repent from their sin, say, Lord Jesus, a remnant needs You to bring revival to this country. He said He would hear them. He would forgive their iniquities and He'd heal their land. Amen. He said, I'm the same yesterday, today, and forever. And if you want to see revival start in Crab Orchard, Kentucky, it starts right now. Amen. It starts right now. 
If you get nothing else out of this message, get your heart right for God right now. You say, Brother Mike, well, I, I go to Sunday school. I go to Sunday church. But I'll tell you right now, if you ain't doing all you can for God, you're coming up short. Amen. Hey, he didn't stop right there on the mountain and say, you know what? No, 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 sir. I, I've done enough. He didn't stop on that mountain and say, Daddy, I've been beat with them cat of nine tails. Hey, they done, they done hit me in my face. They done put that, that crown on me. They done smote it down. He didn't stop right there. No, he made his mind up to go all the way for you. He didn't just carry that cross halfway. He took it all the way up. No man made him hang on that cross. He said, The Father loveth me because I go willingly to the cross. Say amen. 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 He said, I do it for you. And I love when he was telling Nicodemus, he said, Marvel not that I tell you, you must be born again. The same as Moses lifted up that brace of serpent. He said, So must the Son of Man be lifted up. And he said, If I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. Do you still believe that? Amen. Hey, listen, because they were asking this question, Who? And they said, We won't hearken to it. You don't need a hundred tonight. Hey, I just need a tent full of people that makes their minds up for God. And listen to me, the little with God is much. Amen. I like that old song. I'm not going to sing it because y'all might get up and walk out. We'll stick to preaching. But I love it. I love the thought that all I have to do is give what I've got. And it may not be much. The Bible says all my righteousness is filthy rags. But with the Lord Jesus, hey, look at me. We can still see Crab Orchard turn around. We can see the law saved. We can see the backslidden burden. Why? It takes a people. And He chooses His people to do so. Hey, we, we got to quit playing around with this. I, I'm hearing people saying we want it. But then they stop short of it. I want to tell you some things tonight. If we want the old time revival, look here 16. Thus saith the Lord, he says, stand ye in the way. I think it's funny, but he didn't say find a different way. Now, he didn't say, hey, Jeremiah, when you go out there and tell them, hey, go up there and see if they'll turn them church houses into rock houses. Somebody say amen. Don't get quiet on me. Amen. Hey, hey you go dead right now. Look up at me. He said, I want my church to be like it's always supposed to be. He didn't tell them to go find something new. He says, stand ye in the way. He says, seek out the old past. i tell you what's going on right now in this country while we have, we're hindered on revival. It's because, man, we all want something new. We want something easy. We want door knocking to be a one time a week. Give me my hour for the church. Be like my little girl come to the, Hey, no, no, I want to invite you to church real quick. And then we give out one Bible church. Woo! We did all we need to do for the week. Amen? Amen. We want to give the bare minimum. But he didn't say find your new way. See, these new churches, they want the rock music. Hey, they want to get rid of the hymnals. Hey, they, they want it to look like the nightclubs. Hey, look at me. Don't get mad at me. But I'm going to tell you right now, they've been doing it for a while and it ain't working. Our country ain't going forward. It's been going back. I said stand ye in the way and seek out the old path. Amen. Hey, don't tell me, gay. Oh, you're too hard on them. Hey, that way ain't been working. Hey, them sodomites slot to marry now. Hey, actually, we trying all this love and everybody stuff. How about we go back to the old way? Hey, love the sinner, hate the sin. Hey, try to get them one and then love on them. You want to see a drunkard fixed? You can't love him up. You got to tell him about the cross. Yeah. You gotta get him to be hey, get born again. Get him to an old fashioned altar. And look at me, if you ain't saved tonight, you don't need a ten step process. You need an old fashioned altar. All you need to do is trust in a God that can cleanse you up, clean you out, and make you right from here to eternity. Yeah. Say amen. amen. But you gotta get in this. What they do, I'm gonna tell you something, they promote covetousness. Money, money, money. Send me 5000 Look, if you're going to do that, just look, I'm going to help you out. They ain't giving you no money back. You give me 10% of that, and you won't lose none as you will with them TV bands. Say amen. 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 Send me 10000 That's what they're all after. they after the money. But I remember when Jesus walked up into that temple and started flipping tables, He said that my house should be the house of prayer. And He said, you've turned into a den of thieves since this new age stuff. They want their new Bibles. 
God help us. Don't get me on this. Hey, won't change today. There ain't no new version to nothing. Hey, if God's the same yesterday, today, and forever, you've got the perfect Bible when the King James came Amen. out. Amen. Amen. NIV, my hind leg, sir. <laughs> Amen. Y'all help me out in the back, too. Hey, yes, me, are you kidding me? <coughs> hey, there ain't, they, they ain't no such thing as a version con uh, controversy. You got your Bible and you got everything else. Amen. You hold this, young man, it'll change your life. You got you got to get on to it. We want revival. I want to see a group of young people that have not got to see the move of God, but they've only heard stories of it. And shame on us, older generation, that brought them up not letting them see the power of God. We've hindered it. We want to talk about Him like He's in a box. Hey, I still believe y'all don't get nervous on me. Hey, I'm going to be preaching all six nights. Y'all better get liking it. Hey, look at me. He said He could still heal. He said He could still raise up the dead. It's His own will. He ain't got to answer to you. But these young people have not got to see the power of God because a bunch of us got mossy backed. We want to slow down and start putting her in crews. And I'm going to tell you what happens when you do that. You start setting up like stone. Look at me. The God you serve is real, young people. You hear me? And if you do miss heaven, you've missed it all. But there's a lot here on earth that needs to be done. And I'm going to tell you right now, if you want revival, you've got to walk in the old paths. Amen, Brother Nost. I'm feeling good on it, brother. I like it. Whoever gave me that white rag too, I like it too. Bless your heart. I sweat walking around, brother. Now I come out here and I say, I'm going to put my kitty pull over I just hang out in that thing for a little bit. Hey, it's all right to smile. Y'all y'all make me nervous. Everybody all right? Say amen. Amen. I, I, everybody trip away. Everybody all right? Say amen. Amen. Y'all make me nervous. Y'all act like we in some kind of Muslim convention. <laughs> I ain't none of y'all going to be bombed today. Y'all ain't got to go to all and all that nonsense. Ain't, ain't no Buddha. I might look like him, but praise God, I ain't no China man. Say amen. <laughs> y'all make me nervous. It's all right. You all right? I'm all right. Amen. We gotta walk in the old paths. I'm gonna tell you right now. I'm gonna tell you something. This new stuff stole, stole y'all's joy. Right. Right. Amen. Y'all wanna look like the rock stars. So y'all y'all don't wanna get moved around. Throw your hands up. Hey, I still see in the Bible they lift holy hands. Right. Hey, and the whole congregation still told Ezra, Amen. Hey, Amen. Hey, Amen. Hey, they still praised him. They still worshipped him. I remember when he was coming in. Him old, uh, him old mossy back. You know what I'm talking about? Like down there, to, like I. Don't, I don't want to call out the denomination or nothing like that, but I'm talking about like factory, Coventry, Christ oriented, whatever else they put in besides church. You go down there and they look like stones set up. They're pharisaical. There's one right now think we're crazy for being underneath the tent. Worshiping Jesus like that. Are you kidding me? But I remember a Pharisee came to him and said, hey, Hey, he's a rabbi. You know, they was over looking for the coming of Christ. Here he comes right on the donkey fulfilling that prophecy, but you know, it wasn't good enough for them. And they said, Rabbi, Rabbi, he, they said, quiet you people. And I'm going to tell you something right now. I believe the Pharisee has succeeded because Jesus looked at them and he said, I'll tell you right now, he said, if they don't praise me, he said, the rocks will cry out. And a many of Christians today, you've got stones praising God in your name. In your place, not in your name, in your place. Hey, when was the last time you made a guy named Amen in there? Thank you, Jesus. Oh, how was your prayer this morning? I'll I tell you what, I don't know why I'm hung on this, but when I get hung up, I'm going to chase it around until I get released. You with me? It's just me and you, sissy. We're going to talk for a little bit. Hey, when was the last time you gave God the praise He deserved for what He's done for you? You woke up this morning, you got air in your lungs. I'm going to tell you right now, we got to listen to some good singing. Amen. Amen. Got to hear, hey, listen, got God's name lifted up, talking about, hey, how good it's going to be one day. And I look out and listen to me. Don't tell me about the church down the street. I'm talking about the ones in the white seats tonight. Amen. You want the revival? How's your praise with God? He said He inhabits it. It's no great mystery. This Bible's not about nothing that's going to confuse you or mess you up. If you want to see God, you've got to do it God's way. If you want to see God move in your life, you've got to do it God's way. He didn't say find some other new way, brother. He said walk in the old paths. He said just go ahead and search them out. He said you're going to find a good way. 
Because the old has always been good. When they start trying to change the Bible, they start stealing the joy out of y'all. Oh, well, we don't want to be associated with all that down there. Hey, look at me. We ain't being associated with them. We're just doing what's natural. Hey, 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 unless the Bible's changed, that last verse of Psalm 150, that very last verse, said everything that hath breath, praise the Lord. Amen. We got scared of it. Y'all look scared right now. But look at me. If you want revival, don't miss out. Hey, these, these five points here. I want to give you from the Bible. I never want to preach my opinion. I always preach the Bible. And if you get offended, you'll be offended at the Bible. Amen. 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 I'm going to reach out, Patrick. Amen. That's right. Ladies, I'm serious. Look up this generation. We ought to feel bad for them. They, they, they get scared to raise a hand. They get scared to worship. They don't know how to do it. You know why? Because we ain't been doing it. We won't talk about the sodomites winning. They ain't winning. God's giving us what we deserve. Now, don't knock on Barack Obama if you ain't been praying for him. <laughs> Want a new president? When was the last time you prayed for him? You think God's too small to save him? Help me out. God's still able. He's still in the saving business. We want revival, Brother Neil. Hey, look at me. It's going to take a many attempt meetings like this right here to shake it up. Don't come in with no ear tickling. Hey, give it straight and then everybody change on it. I told Billy Sunday one time, he said, you, you scratched the cat the wrong way. He said, well, they turned the cat around. <laughs> Amen. I can't get off this. I'm trying to move on. I got five points. It's getting dark. Uh, we got a big light. Don't y'all get nervous. We, we good. But if you want it, you're going to have to adhere to God's way. And I'm going to say the first thing we got to do if we want old time revival and we want to walk in the old past, one thing we got to settle out is salvation. I do not know why in 2015. Y'all going to forgive me because I don't forget what our devil like Titanic. <laughs> Amen. Hey, but 2015, if we want revival, the first thing we're going to have to get settled out is this salvation. I mean, we get moved on every wave. I heard brethren wavering on it. Hey, look at me. Predestination, my hind leg. Hey, they wasn't nothing predestinated but how Jesus would die on the cross. And that whoever would call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Ephesians 2, 8, 9 says, For by grace are you saved. Through faith, that not of yourselves. It's a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. we got to get settled on this salvation thing. What happens is I listen to Christians get questioned about it and they'll get nervous and they'll get off of it. That comes from a lack of study, just to let you know. What about that water baptism? Uh, what, what about this? What about that? I'm going to tell you right now, you look up at me, it's Jesus plus nothing for salvation. Amen. Amen. Hey, it's Jesus only for salvation. That's right. I said it's Jesus only for salvation. Amen. They ain't nothing added to it. You find it in the Bible, and you you wrote it in there. Somebody say amen. Amen. He didn't say, I'm our way, young man. He said, I'm the way. He said, I'm the way. You say, well, well, well which way is it? I said, he said he was the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by him. If you want to get to God tonight, you've got to only go through one person, and that's Jesus Christ and the shed blood of Calvary. Amen. There's amen. power in that blood. If you've trusted in anything else, you look up at me, you ain't no more saved than a jaybird is. Tonight, though, can be your night. You want revival? It's got to start a salvation. If you want revival, look up at me. It's got to start at being born again. You can fake out everybody you want to fake out. God said, I'm looking at that appearance. Hey, that dude could be wearing a white shirt. I mean, cool suspenders. You with me? Black shoes. But if that heart is corrupt, if that heart ain't never been sealed according to Ephesians 1 13 by the Holy Spirit or promised by trusting through Jesus Christ, hey, you was headed as far as the hell as can be. Don't like it. Hey, look at me. I'd rather tell you the truth. You get mad and kick my shins here and we high five in heaven. There's no other way to get to heaven but being born again, just like he told Nicodemus. And he said it's a simple thing because he told him to marvel not that he must be born again. He said, it's only through me. He said, if you try any other way, you're the same as a thief. Right. Amen. Amen. 
We gotta get this settled. When somebody comes up to you and says, I want to be a born again, I'm gonna ask you a question. How many of you can open your Bible up and say, Brother Mike, I can give them the words of life from the Word of God? And I wouldn't hold my breath and pass out before they got saved. Hey, I'm talking about powerful stuff here. I'm talking about God led things. I teach an evangelism class at our church. We ain't got a big class, we got a class. You know what I tell them? Door knocking is our is our part. But once the door opens, just ask God's around there. The conviction comes from God. Hey, look at me. The salvation comes from God. That's God's time right there. And if we as Christians, I ain't just preaching lost me by salvation thing. Hey, if you ain't told nobody on it, shame on you. Hey, man, we want revival. You've got to get it straight. you got to get it right. Revival ain't going to come from half-hearted people. When they all gathered back up in Israel, after Jeremiah preached to them right here, and said, it's coming. They, the Babylonians on their way. They didn't hearken in. But when they did get right, they got it all right. They went back. When Ezra opened that Bible, this is what the Lord said. You know what they said? Hey, that's what He says. They said, all people said, amen. They said, we just going to hang on the Word of God. And the first thing to this revival meeting, if you want revival to start under this tent, Number one, you've got to be born again. And look at me, if you tell me this emotionalism stuff, what bothers you? If you've got something as big as God in you and nothing ever stirs you up, hey, I don't believe it. Hey, man, listen, I get tore up just hearing about if you miss heaven, you'll miss it all. I get tore up just hearing you must be born again. There's got to be something inside of you that says I've got something of God and you want to share it. Don't tell me you're saved and you got to hide the candle. The Bible tells you no man would build a city underneath it. He said he put it high up on the hill for all to see. There's got to be something in you that starts at this salvation. Number two thing. Turn over to 1 Peter chapter 1. Y'all turn over there. I'm going to turn somewhere and I'll be right over with you. Once you get this salvation, you look at me. Don't wait till the pianist comes. If you want to be born again, you come right now. Somebody open the King James Bible and they'll show you how to get saved. But if you want to wait till the end, you come at the end. Listen to me. I wouldn't wait one minute. Hey, hell can be coming. If God splits the eastern sky, your time has ran out. If I wasn't saved, I'd get it done quick. I wouldn't wait till the next tent meeting. I hear that a lot. I'll wait till later and the next thing I say, I'll see him in jail. Or I read about him in the newspaper. Salvation, if he's knocking now, you better answer. It might be the last time he ever knocks. Amen. I ain't made myself. That's good. If this is that, look up at me. If it's your last time, it may be the final draw of God to your heart tonight. And he makes a command there. As I was reading now, I want to read you something here. Y'all are over there. Don't get scared. Y'all are in 1 Peter. I'm going to read out of Ephesians chapter uh, tw uh, verse uh, 12 and 13. Listen to this now. That we should be the praise of His glory who trusted in Christ. And whom, whom ye also trust after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. And whom also ye, ye after ye believed, ye were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Let me say it again. I didn't take a drink of water. I'm going to try to do like y'all suck his smear here. Listen to this now. Verse 13, chapter 1 of Ephesians, In whom ye also trusted, after ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Don't tell me you get the Holy Ghost anything separated from salvation. This is a bad doctrine going around. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and kill us when we get over about that sanctification. Hey, listen, if you get saved, you get the power of God living in you when you believe. That's in Ephesians 1.13. And we need that Holy Ghost power. We, we, we've drummed it down. I like that Holy Spirit only because it's Bible. But look at me, if it scares you to say Holy Ghost, something might be wrong. Hey, man, I'm seeing a lot of frowns. Hey, keep frowning. It's in there. Hey, if you're scared of that word, Holy Ghost, something might be wrong. It ain't something spooky. Hey, he ain't some stepchild. He's the third part of the Godhead. His Father, hey, God, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. And you get Him when you get saved and you sail with Him. Amen. But I'm going to tell you, I can look around and tell you, there's some of these adults that's a fire from me. 
Hey, man. I think this will grow me more than all y'all have. Right here in the pink shirt. She's sitting next to some men or some sins. But I'm serious. Say this, doctor. we got to get this sealed. If we want revival, we need the power of God that lives inside of us. But there's some things we got to do. Not that He needs us, but that He asks us. Y'all are over in 1 Peter, right? Y'all help me out, amen? Y'all in 1 Peter? Amen. Everybody all right? See, y'all still here? Amen. amen. Hey, you ladies, you wave a hanky, give me a head and all something, just don't pass out on me. Y'all with me? Amen. I'm having fun, but no sign. You like me? Yes, sir. Amen. 1 Peter chapter 1, I want you to look at verse 13. Wherefore, gird up your loins of your mind and be sober, and hope to the end for the grace that is, bit, is to be brought unto you through the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lust in your ignorance, but as He which hath called you is holy. Look up at me. I said the one that has called you is holy. And He says here that if He's holy... He says, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. The second point, once you get the salvation, the reason I went back here and read about being sealed with that Holy Spirit is when you get saved, some things ought to change about you. Amen. Hey, you Amen. ought not be, hey, look, I'm not saying you got to get saved and preach the next day. I ain't saying you got to go teach Sunday school, but there ought to be something different about you when you get saved. There's some things you might want to change. There's some things you might want to clean up. Hey, look at me. There's no salvation without conviction. You understand me? You've got to be convicted. And once you get saved, you're still going to be convicted over things. Them old things supposed to pass away. How can you tell me that we got God living in us and we're comfortable with the filth and the nastiness and all the things that we put in our eyes and our ears? That's right. On a daily basis. We want revival. Look at me. Hey, you know, then like, you know, be ye separate, come out from among them, touch not the unclean thing. He said, you, hey, you be my sons and daughters, I'll be a father unto you. We want the power of God, but we want to do it in a worldly way. He didn't say it works that way. He said, you got to come out from among them. And when you get saved and you get the Holy Ghost in you and He seals you, Miss Mary, we got to start living like He's in us. We got to start living like we got saved. I'm tired of looking around at saved people and I can't tell them from the world and I can't tell the world from the saved people. Go into Walmart. God help you if you do. I'm telling you. These women right there defile my, my son's eyes when we go in there and my daughter's eyes, my eyes, my wife's eyes. Hey, you look up at me. If you ain't got no clothes on, put clothes on. Amen. Hey, look at me. Don't give me conviction on that. Hey, it's still a commandment. He wants you to cover up your nakedness. Adam and Eve had enough sense even after sinning with that fruit. They hid themselves because of their nakedness. But we don't want to know if, if it's, you know, nobody's watching, we're going to be okay. No, you're not that you're not your own, but you've been purchased with a price. He told you, so that temple there is the Holy Ghost. He said, that's His. That's not yours no more. We want revival. Same people are going to have to get a hold of this right here. It's time to start living holy lives. Trying to make a difference with your lives. There ain't nothing wrong with cleaning up and getting right with God. Amen. I like it. I mean, look at me. Don't get tore, tore, too tore up over this. He just said, be ye holy for I'm holy. He told them back in Leviticus. He told them here. If he told it to them then, he's telling it to you now. We want revival. I want to see this place packed out, Miss Bridget, before Saturday. I do. I want to see people come in. But listen to me. There may not be enough light on here to draw a moth right now. But you get a hold of this, there might be a flame out of one of you. And one of you might catch the flame and it might go off on another. And it might go off on another. I ain't here to beat you up. I ain't telling you I've arrived. I'm just telling you that I'm convicted about what I read. And I need to change myself to the way the Bible tells me to live. Right. Miss Nostein, I hope they get so many we got to keep pushing your chair on out in the, in the road. <laughs> or let you come on in and push them out. <laughs> I'm telling you, hey, her husband up here singing his spleen out, ain't got no piano player. Hey, look at me doing it for God's glory. Hey, man, I want some of that in my life. That's right. And I'm 
convicted today because we've got to where everything's acceptable. Y'all got TVs? God help you. It was quiet enough. I mean, it died our new generator on that. <laughs> hey, man, you like this? Yes, sir. I like it too, buddy. I'm, I'm in on it. Hey, your music. Look up at me. Don't you all quit the fight, you young people. And I know the music being thumped into you more and more now than it ever has been. But you look at me, it will corrupt you to the bone. Get with me on my testimony of it. I live it, and I'm telling you, it'll corrupt you to your bones. The language that you use. When we've got so far away from the way we talk, hey, some of y'all so comfortable cussing. Hey man, hey, hey, hey listen, I, I get around some of the Christians and they, they'll be hanging out with you for a little bit, let them stub a toe. Let, 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 them, jam a, let them jam a finger. Let them find out their paycheck didn't come just right. Hey man, look up at me. It ain't praying time, it's preaching time. Hey, get, get them around you for a while and let them hang themselves a little bit. You say, well, Brother Michael, did, did, did somebody call you and give me money? No, because I'm just like you was. I'm just like you are. I've been convicted all week about this book. Isn't it? Why in the world have we ever thought that it was time to start settling in and being a, a happy with where we're at? But, hey, I had a man come over to my house. Brother Nils, God's on the street. I got so convicted from this Bible. And, you know, Mama don't say a whole lot when she does her some weight on it. And she started getting some conviction. And she said, Mike, I think we need to, she said, Daddy, I think we need to look at this by who we let in the house. Hey, it's Bible. Don't get nervous, but it's Bible. If any man call him a brother and is an railer and an accuser, and it gives a whole list of sin, he said, don't even eat with him. And I set that man down. He's a brother in Christ. And I said, if you keep up your lifestyle, I said, you want to choose a different freak because it won't be me no more. You say, what happened? Did he get right with God and come back to your house? I ain't seen him since. But I tell you right now, I see some blessings of God from it. He ain't going to meddle with it. He can't be around unholy things. He has to be around holy things. He's a holy and righteous God. He loves, don't get me wrong, I know He loves. He loves so much He gave His only begotten for you. But He said if you loved Him, you'd keep His commandments. He said if you loved Him, you'd walk in all His ways. They don't preach that side of love anymore. It's a one-sided love they won't talk about. Hey, we want revival. There's a call to separation. There's a call to holiness. There's a call to people that want to do something for God. Number three thing. I like this. But boy, I like it. If, if you get saved and you start trying to live separated, they get you in a good King James Bible leaving church. Y'all, I mean, rubbing me like the wrong one. I said, get in a good King James Bible believing church. Amen. Amen. Once you get saved, hey, hey, get right with God, you get into a good King James Bible believing church. That's right. And once that happens, Brother Bullock, you won't start studying that word. Because you know, when you get saved by that word, in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God and the Word was God. Hey, you know what the is? It says that the Word became flesh. It didn't know him. It says he knew him not. But as many as received Him, He gave Him the powers to become the sons of God. Amen. Once you get saved and you start wanting to get right, listen, you can't help but read this Bible. You want all of it. You don't just want the Psalms anymore. Well, I can tell who's been reading Psalms only this month. <laughs> You don't want just a proverb anymore. You'll find out there's some the books like Habakkuk, Zephaniah. Yeah, you look. I'm looking around there like, what? what, what is, talk tongue? What's up? <laughs> You'll find out there's a whole lot more to your God than just bare minimum basics. You'll find out He's a deep God. When you start finding out how deep He is, you might want to tread out a little bit more with Him. I found Brother Neil the more I've read that Bible, the more I've got promises. Can't have a Bible without knowing God's there for you. I've had some bad times. I've had some bad times in my life. Now I'm talking about this marriage go through 
a, a, a little struggle a year ago. His brother weren't there no more. He walked out on me. Hey, don't look at me. Hey, look, I'm telling you, the God's honest truth, they come up once you start reproving yourself and start fixing yourself. You get in the wrong situation. You feel like you're getting buried. The walls are coming down. Your brother weren't running around then. They want you preaching the church when it's only good for them. I'm going to tell you what I found. I found out that his promises were real. He said, I'd never leave you nor forsake you. Amen. Hey, David said that if he made his bed in heaven, he was with him. But I like the Psalm 139. He said, but if I make my bed in hell, he said, behold, thou art with me. you got to find that out for yourself. you got to get this Bible. 2 Timothy 2.15, he didn't say if you want to. He said, study to show yourself true. Unto God. Not to man's prayer. For God's approved. A workman need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. You mean take all these false doctrines come slipping in when they don't study the Bible out? Peace milling. Hey man, help me out. That's why in Sodomites think they can get married. Units. I like one of them come up and tell me about being a unit. I'll tell them the qualifications. <laughs> Hey, man, man, we laugh about it, but nobody's told them. They're scared of them. Right. Bunch of sodomites. Everybody's scared of sodomites. Huh? Are you kidding me? Hey, we laugh about it. When, when would you witness to one? What about them Muslims? Have you dealt with any of them lately? Hey, I won't preach nothing I don't do myself. Hey, I like it when I give them them Bible tracts. I, I get one book, book. It's a jewel. I, I, I stole it from somebody, but it's still a jewel. They get to going on about how their religion is real close to ours. Look at them and say, "What's Jesus?" And they say, "A prophet." And I'll say, "He said he was the Son of God. And if he ain't the Son of God, he's the biggest liar to ever live. And that kills him out for being a prophet." And you know what they'll do? They'll take walk out by where my wife is right now. They'll get away from me in a hurry. They'll take off from me. There ain't nothing in that garbage. But you got to study your Bible to find anything out. Right now it looks dark and gloomy. If you study your Bible, you find out we win this thing. find out that we win it. We're the victims. But we're walking around, we in a temper revival. Hey, we ought to be smiling, having a good time, but some of our toes are hurting. Well, i tell you what you do, wear thicker socks tomorrow night and come back. Amen. Amen. We need it. Hey, you forgive me, my, my calling is this, reprove, forgive, then exhort with all long suffering. I ain't got the exhort part yet, and I ain't on rebuking yet either. I want to get off of it. Y'all have gotten so quiet. Hey, I'm talking about studying this Word. It ought to be the first thing you do before you eat breakfast. It ought to be the last thing you do before you go to bed. Hey, it ought to be something that burns on your mind and you ought to try to memorize it. Hide it away in your heart. If this thing keeps going like it is, you ain't going to have a copy of it anymore. My question is, if He stole it from you right now, some of you take all of it with you. Well, then we better hide it in our heart. We want revival. It's going to come through His Word. Amen. Amen. Four point. Pray. Go to James chapter 5. I like when you bring your Bibles, you know I ain't making nothing up. I like hearing them pages say, Amen. I like it. I like your Bibles being turned. James chapter 5 says here in verse 3, 13, Is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Skip down to verse 14. Any sick among you, let him call for the elders of the church. Let him pray over him, anoint him with oil in the name of the Lord. Verse 15. And the prayer of the faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven. In verse 16, confess your faults one to another and pray for another that you may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. John chapter 17, if you go there in verse 9, Jesus said, I pray not for the world. He said, but I pray for these. If our Lord found it good to pray, His people ought to find it good to pray. There's power in it. That's how you tend to God's ear. You want to get a hold of daddy, it only comes one way. It's on your knees. If you want revival, it's going to come through prayer. You ain't going to get this fake stuff. 
Elijah was over up on top of that mountain with them false prophets. And prophets of Grove and the prophets of Baal. And they said, we're going to find out. Hey, I love your story, Brother Troy. Hey, I, I'm feeling good on it too right now. I like it. He looked at me and said, we're going to find out whose God is the real God. He said, we're going to build us an altar. And man, if you look at that, he looks at me and he says, but don't you put no fire under it. He said, we want the real deal. I want the real fire to fall from heaven. He said, don't you slip no matches under there. He said, I don't want you faking me out on this. I want the real true God to show up in this. If you're going to call down fire, you ain't going to do it by lighting the flame yourself. It's got to come from in these. You get a little bit of fire on you and a little man like this right here knock on the door on, a, on, on one of them Hindus that lives down the road here. And guess what she did? She opened up and welcomed him in. I got to present the gospel to a Hindu. If they don't make you excited, you as dead as you can be. She's ready to accept him as one of her 30-something gods. I said, no, ma'am, it don't work like that. You've got to forsake them all. But it don't take no accident to get you in a house like that. It takes the fire of God, and that's what it's going to take for revival. We've got to be able to call it down. And we I, I don't want something fake. I want Jesus to show up in this. I want God to come down so hard that I know the fire is real. Amen. But it ain't going to come from faking it. It's going to come from prayer. He said, Brother Mike, I ain't used to praying like that. I'm not used to reading like this. Start doing it. If you men want to see God move in your life bigger than DL moving, it could be one of you three sitting here and have more people say, but number one, you're going to have to humble yourself and hit your knees. Can God look at me and answer because he says right there the effectual fervent prayers. That means over and over. He said it availeth much. Brother Bullock, I want to see something of God so real, but it ain't going to come from faking it. And the last point here, y'all being real good listeners. I want you to listen to this. Don't, don't tune me out yet. I put simply this, get to work. Matthew 9, 37. Then say he unto his disciples, talking about Jesus himself. The harvest is truly plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest will send forth the laborers into His harvest. You've been called to win souls. Look at me. I don't care what you do. I don't care how good your banjo playing is. I don't care how good your singing is. You've been called to win souls. What good is the salt if it's lost its savor? The Bible says to be trodden under feet. I, I go door knocking. I like whenever I find out who really wants to show up for the door knocking. I like hearing that high pitched laugh from Miss Bridges when she gets in the van. <laughs> I was trying to hope she'd laugh this thing. She'd find it. I, I like seeing my girls going into the van. I like hearing about young men going out with their daddies. But I'm going to tell you right now, this 20% of us does it all nonsense. If you want revival, quit expecting everybody else to do your part. Don't work it. I got one of the children to go to heaven. We want somebody else to tell them how to get there. We want our city to break out in revival. But we're hoping somebody else is going to do it. We want to hear about souls saved. We're just going to hope somebody else steps in the boat. The Bible says, He that winneth souls is wise. And here in a minute, we're going to open this altar up. I'm not going to go through every point again. I might preach them all again. Number one, if you have never been born again, Quit fighting it. Quit fighting it. Quit making excuses. Quit telling yourself how to be tomorrow. How many times have you told yourself it'll be tomorrow? If you've never been born again, tonight's your night. I'll rejoice with you. Miss Bridget might be last for you.
if your life has been anything other than holy living and separate, the first key of that pen that gets struck, this old-fashioned altar will be open. This is not for a physical sacrifice, but He's calling His people to a spiritual sacrifice. And we ought to be covered up on this altar if there's anything in your life that would hinder the, oh man, the power of God and revival for this city. You ought to hit your knees and beg God for forgiveness tonight. And I'm going to tell you, you say, what will happen if we do those things? God will hold to His part. 